The following Zoom session is being recorded and will appear later today on my YouTube channel, Math with Mayo. There are two different classes that may be observing this session. Therefore, when you participate in the Zoom meeting, if you do not wish for your picture or your name to be made public, please leave the video, uh, I can't talk, leave the video off and use an alias name. If you have questions during the meeting but do not wish to speak, email me at bmail at ybcc.edu and I'll respond as soon as I can. All right, so we're going to take a look at section 5.5 now, which is adding and subtracting polynomials. Okay. Now, before we get started on that, I want to actually do a little bit of review that goes back to chapter two, which has material that you would have recovered if you uh, would have recovered, would have covered if you took math 85 or math 84 or some beginning algebra class somewhere else. And I want to talk about the idea of like terms versus unlike terms. All right. If I have 2x plus 3x, that equals 5x. Just like if I have uh, if I have two bottles of water plus three bottles of water, I have five bottles of water. When you're adding or subtracting like terms, you add or subtract the coefficients. So two of something plus three of the same thing is five of that something. Okay, if I had 6y minus 2y, that would be 6 minus 2, which is 4y. If I have 6 of something and I take 2 of that something away, I still have 4 of that something left. Let's take a look at unlike terms. 2x plus 3y, those are not like terms. I can't combine them. I just have to leave them as 2x plus 3y things get a little more tricky when we start adding variables of different degrees. For instance, if I have 4x squared plus 5x squared, that's 9x squared because they are like terms. They both contain x squared. But if I have 4x squared plus 5x, those are not like terms. Even though they have the same variable, the degree of the variable isn't the same. So 4x squared plus 5x would be 4x squared plus 5x. Let's say I have 3x squared y plus 4x squared y. That would be 7x squared y. Because the terms are like terms, they are identical except for their coefficients. What if I had 3x squared y plus 4xy squared? Even though they both contain the variable x and y, they are of different degrees. So that's just 3x squared y plus 4x y squared. Okay, so that's a brief review of some things we would have done way back in chapter two. Now let's take a look at section 5.5. And it says simplify each polynomial and write it in descending powers. Let me say that again. Simplify each polynomial and write it in descending powers of one variable. All right. 15x squared plus 10x squared would equal 25x squared. Since once we combine the two like terms, we just have one term. That's all there is. So writing it in descending powers, there's just one term to write. But let's take a look at this problem. Let's say we have 17y squared minus 22y minus y squared. 17y squared minus y squared. Those are like terms. Keep in mind there's an implied one coefficient in front, or a negative one actually. 17 of something minus one of something would be 16 of something. Now, 16y squared and negative 22y are not like terms, so I can't combine them. 
but I do have the binomial written in descending powers of y. The first term has y squared. The second term has y to the first power. So descending powers of the variable. Any questions about that example? OK, let's take a look at this one. Negative 3y squared minus y minus 6y squared plus 7y. So these are like terms, and those are like terms. Negative 3y squared minus 6 more y squared would be negative 9y squared. Negative y plus 7y would be plus 6y. So I've combined like terms, and I've written the answer in descending powers of the variable y. All right, let's do a quick review. So the answer is a binomial. The first term is negative 9y squared. The second term is 6y. The coefficient of the first term is negative 9. The coefficient of the second term is 6. The degree of the first term is 2. The degree of the second term is 1. And the degree of the entire binomial would also be 2. Remember that the degree of an entire polynomial is equal to the degree of the highest powered term within the polynomial. And if you're writing the polynomial in descending powers, the highest powered term is going to be the first term. Any questions? All right. This one's a bit trickier. We have 1 fifth x squared minus 3 eighths x plus 2 thirds x squared plus 1 fourth x. Now, these are like terms and those are like terms. The problem is to add 1 fifth x squared plus 2 thirds x squared, we need a common denominator. So I'm going to just rewrite this, putting the like terms next to each other. Okay. So I need a common denominator of 5 and 3. What's the least common denominator? I should say, well, yeah, of 5 and 3. Anybody? 15. 15, good. So this becomes something over 15x squared plus something over 15x squared. Now, to take 1 fifth and change it to something over 15, I'd have to multiply the denominator by 3, right? 3 times 5 is 15. But whatever I do to the denominator of a fraction, I have to do the same thing to the numerator. So my new fraction becomes 3 fifteenths. So I took 1 fifth times 3 thirds, which is equal to 1. I can multiply by 1, so I can multiply by 3 thirds. I'm building that fraction 1 fifth to a new fraction with a, comp with a denominator of 15. So 1 fifth x squared equals 3 fifteenths x squared. Any questions about that? All right, now we're gonna take 2 thirds and change it to something over 15. So I'm gonna multiply the denominator by five and the numerator by five. So my new numerator becomes 10. So 2 thirds times 5 fifths, which is like 2 thirds times one, equals 10 fifteenths. Why did I do all that? So now I've got two fractions, 3 fifteenths and 10 fifteenths, that I need to add, and they have the same common denominator. So 3 fifteenths x squared plus 10 fifteenths x squared would be 13 fifteenths x squared. And we're halfway done with the problem. Any questions there? Anything you want me to go back and go over again? All right. What's the least common denominator of eight and four? What's the smallest number that eight and four both go into? Eight. Eight, excellent. 
So I'm going to get minus something over 8x plus something over 8x. Oh, well, this already has an 8 in the denominator. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So negative 3 eighths x is still negative 3 eighths x. But I've got to take 1 fourth x and multiply that by what? 2 over 2 to get something over 8x. So 1 fourth x becomes 2 eighths x. Okay, with that. Now, let's see. Minus 3 eighths plus 2 eighths would be minus 1 eighth x. The first two, the, these two terms are not like terms, so I can't combine them, but I've got them written in descending powers. The x squared term is first, followed by the x term. Any questions about that? A question that comes up sometimes is, why didn't we find a least common denominator of all four terms? We only needed least common denominators of terms we were going to combine. We weren't putting the x squared terms with the x terms, so we didn't need a common denominator for all of them, just the like terms. So here are the 15 and here are the 8. Okay, let's take a look at some decimal polynomials. This says 0.6x cubed plus 0.8x to the fourth plus 0.7x cubed plus negative 0.8x to the fourth. Okay, so these are like terms and those are like terms. I'm going to start with the highest powered terms first, which would be the x to the fourth term. What's 0.8x to the fourth plus negative 0.8x to the fourth? That would be zero, wouldn't it? Those would just cancel out. So I've got zero x to the fourth. Now, if my entire answer was zero x to the fourth, I would just write zero. But since I have more coming, I don't need to put anything for that. Okay, I don't need to write zero x to the fourth. What about this? 0.6x cubed plus 0.7x cubed. 0.6 plus 0.7 would be what? 1.3. So we get 1.3x cubed as our final answer. Noisy bottle of water. All right. Any questions there? Okay. How about this? One half ST plus three halves ST. These are like terms. So we want to add the coefficients, but the coefficients have the same denominator. One half plus three halves would be four halves ST. But I can reduce four halves down to two. So my final answer would be 2ST. Okay, let's see here. Uh, 4X squared Y plus 5 minus 6X cubed Y minus 3X squared Y plus 2x cubed y, all right? So we're going to combine like terms. And let's see, these two are like terms, and those two are like terms. I've got two variables, but I can see that um, there's a higher power of x in one of the set of like terms than there is in the other set. So I'm going to still put it in descending powers of x. So I'm going to deal with these two first. Negative 6 of something plus 2 of something would be negative 4 of something, that something being x cubed y. Okay. Then 4x squared y minus 3x squared y would be plus 1x squared y. And then finally, plus 5. Now, the 1 isn't necessary. It's implied. And I want to point out something important to do with WebAssign. 
it has been my experience that in WebAssign, if you put that one coefficient or a one as an exponent, WebAssign gets confused, doesn't recognize it, and marks it wrong. Okay. And technically it isn't wrong, but it's not necessary. So just get used to if the coefficient is a one, you don't need to write it. If the coefficient is a negative one, you just put the negative sign. And if the exponent is a one, you don't need to put the one there. All right. Okay. Now, so far we've just been adding and subtracting terms. Now we're going to add or subtract polynomials. How is that going to differ? Okay. So here we have 3q squared minus 5q plus 7. So there's a trinomial plus 2q squared plus q minus 12. My voice keeps cracking. Ah, okay. Now, so we're adding two trinomials. Before we can combine like terms from the separate binomial or trinomials, excuse me, we need to get rid of those grouping symbols. So the following rules apply. If there is either nothing in front of a set of parentheses, like the first set, or there's a plus sign in front of the set of parentheses, like the second set, you can basically eliminate the set of parentheses. So the first one is going to become this. Distributing the plus, like taking plus one times what's left, is just basically going to give you what's inside of the second set of parentheses. How is this different from what I started with? Now I've gotten rid of the grouping symbols, so I can combine these two and those two and those two. Okay. I'm also going to write my answer in descending powers of Q. So I'm going to combine the like terms involving Q to the highest power, which is Q squared. So 3Q cubed squared plus 2 cubed squared. I can't talk. 3Q squared plus 2Q squared is 5Q squared. Okay. Minus 5q plus 1q would be minus 4q. And finally, 7 minus 12 is minus 5. So the answer is a trinomial of degree 2. Any questions about that example? Excuse me. OK. Let's... Hi, quick question. Yes. Okay, so I'm a little confused on the negative 12. So you distribute the, the plus, wouldn't that change it to a plus? But it would be plus negative 12. Oh, okay. Which I could have written plus negative 12, but I just chose to write minus 12 because it's less right. You okay with that? Yeah, I understand okay. now. Okay, great. Any other questions, anybody, before we go on? Okay. Uh, let's see here. Let's take a look at this example. 1 16th r to the sixth power plus 1 half r cubed minus 11 twelfths plus the quantity 9 sixteenths r to the sixth plus nine fourths r cubed plus one twelfth. Okay, so again, I've got nothing in front of the first set of parentheses, so I can just bring everything down outside of the parentheses. And a plus sign distributed through the second set of parentheses just gives me the same stuff, but outside. Okay. Now, combining like terms, those go together, and those go together, and those go together. So, 1 16th r to the sixth plus 9 16th r to the sixth. I'm going to go ahead and just write those next to each other. 1 16th r to the sixth plus 9 16th r to the sixth would be 10 16th 
r to the sixth, which could be reduced down to five eighths r to the sixth power. Okay with that? Let's take a look at the next example, plus one half r cubed plus nine fourth r cubed. So here I need a common denominator of two and four. And what's that gonna be? What's the smallest number that two and four both go into evenly? Four. Four, yes. so. Four. So I'm gonna multiply one half by two over two, which gives me plus two fourths r cubed. Nine fourths r cubed already has four as a common denominator. What's nine? What's two fourths r cubed plus nine fourths r cubed? That's going to be what? Eleven fourths r cubed. Okay. And then finally, minus eleven twelfths plus one twelfth would be minus ten twelfths, which is minus five sixths. Okay. So our final answer is going to be 5 eighths r to the sixth plus 11 fourths r cubed minus 5 sixths. Okay, I want to mention another thing about WebAssign that I mentioned uh, during the last, uh, the information building up to the last test. In WebAssign, you don't want to use mixed numbers. Now, 11 fourths, whoops. 11 fourths would be equal to two and three fourths, right? But in WebAssign, don't use a mixed number. So you'd either have to use an exact decimal, which we would be 2.75 or an improper fraction. And I would just leave it as an improper fraction, but be sure to reduce it down. Like for instance, negative or minus 10 twelfths reduces down to minus five sixths. But if you wrote two and, a, uh, let's see, two and three quarters R cubed, WebAssign doesn't, doesn't recognize that. So avoid mixed numbers. Okay. Now, let's take a look at adding polynomials in a vertical form. We've been adding them up horizontally. Let's say we've got this situation, six X cubed minus four X squared plus seven, and then we've got seven X cubed plus nine X squared plus 12. And we're gonna be adding these together. So we're gonna add up each column, okay? Now, when you add arithmetic numbers, you add starting at the right end. So let's see here, we've got seven plus 12 would be what? Plus 19. Minus 4x squared plus 9x squared would be plus 5x squared. And 6x cubed plus 7x cubed would be 13x cubed, okay? Now, if you're like me, I find adding uh, vertically like this uh, just a little awkward, even though it, it models what you typically do with arithmetic. It's, I just prefer to add them horizontally. So why deal with this? Well, coming up at the end of this chapter, section 5.8, we're gonna be doing some division of polynomials and it's gonna require us to do things in this vertical form. So you wanna practice that ahead of time to be used to it, okay? All right, let's take a look at one more of those. Let's see here, three X cubed plus four X squared minus three X plus five. And then we've got three X cubed minus four X squared minus X minus seven. And we're going to add those together. So starting at the right end, plus five minus seven would be minus two. Minus three X minus one more X would be minus four X. Four X squared minus four X squared is zero. And three X squared plus three X squared is six, excuse me, three X cubed plus three X cubed is six X to this. That's not right either. Oh, goodness gracious. Slow down here. Okay. Let's go back. Four X squared plus negative four X squared would be zero. I'm just gonna put this here, zero X squared. 
And then 3x cubed plus 3x cubed would be 6x cubed. Now, we don't really need to write the 0x squared. I was just putting that there to show what we get. So you could leave your answer like that in this form. Or you could say 6x cubed minus 4x minus 2. All right, with that. Okay. Now, we've been adding, let's take a look at subtracting polynomials. So let's say I've got 3x or 3a squared minus 2a plus 4 minus the quantity a squared minus 3a plus 7. Recall we said that if there was nothing in front of, us, front of a set of parentheses, we could bring out the stuff inside the parentheses. If there's a plus sign in front, we distribute the plus sign, plus what's inside just gives you what's inside. But now we're distributing a minus, or it's like there's a minus one times everything inside. Well, minus one times a squared is minus one a squared, or minus a squared. Minus one times minus three a is plus, minus times minus is plus three a, and minus one times plus seven is minus seven. So distributing a plus sign doesn't change what's inside, but distributing a minus sign changes the sign of every term inside the parentheses. Now that we've gotten rid of the grouping symbols, the parentheses, we can combine like terms. 3a squared minus a squared is 2a squared. Minus 2a plus 3a is plus 1a, but I'm just going to write plus a. And plus, plus 4 minus 7 is minus 3. So our answer is a trinomial and descending powers of a. And it's of degree 2. Any questions about that? Okay, let's take a look at this situation. It says subtract a from b. How would you write subtract a from b? It would be b minus a, right? If you said subtract four from six, you'd write six minus four, which would be two subtract something from something else. Okay, so now the directions here say subtract 2x squared minus 2x plus 3 from 3x squared plus 4x plus 5. Subtract a from b becomes b minus a. So this is going to be 3x squared plus 4x plus 5 minus 2x squared minus 2x plus 3. But there's something wrong with what I've written there. Can anybody tell me what I need to do to make it right? No takers? Okay. We are to subtract all of that. So I need to group all of that and then distribute the subtraction sign to each and every term. Now, I could also group this first one, but since there's nothing inside of it or nothing to the left, it wouldn't change things. But I'm going to get 3x squared plus 4x plus 5 minus 2x squared, minus a minus, which is plus 2x minus 3. So if I don't do it correctly, I'm going to end up with the wrong signs here and here. Okay, So I'm subtracting that entire polynomial. So I've got to subtract the entire polynomial, then distribute the subtraction sign, and then come back and combine like terms. 3x squared minus 2x squared is 1x squared, or just x squared. 4x plus 2x is 6x 
and five minus three is plus two. So you've got to do it correctly to get the right answer. You're subtracting that entire group. Any questions about that? Okay, let's see here. So this becomes, let's see, we've got seven eighths r to the fourth plus five ninths r squared minus nine fourths minus the quantity negative three eighths r to the fourth minus two thirds r squared minus one fourth. All right, so we're subtracting two trinomials. So first of all, we need to get rid of the grouping symbols. There's nothing in front of the first set of grouping symbols, the first set of parentheses, so we can just bring everything outside just like it is, okay? Then we're gonna distribute, subtracting a negative is plus 3 eighths r to the fourth, subtracting a negative is plus 2 thirds r squared, and subtracting a negative is plus 1 fourth, okay? So, Subtracting all of those negatives makes them all positives. Combining like terms, 7 eighths r to the fourth plus 3 eighths r to the fourth is 10 eighths r to the fourth is 5 fourths r to the fourth. Okay. 5 ninths r squared plus two thirds r squared. So here we need a common denominator. What's the least common denominator of nine and three? It's nine. So we're gonna get plus five ninths r squared plus how many ninths r squared? Well, two thirds, we'd multiply by three thirds and get six ninths. So two thirds r squared becomes six ninths r squared. And 5 ninths plus 6 ninths is 11 ninths r squared. Okay with that. And then let's see here. We've got minus 9 fourths plus 1 fourth, which is minus 8 fourths or minus 2. So we get that trinomial, which is a fourth degree trinomial. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to make an attempt at a drawing. We'll see how it turns out. You'll see why I'm not teaching art class. So we're going to have this airplane. Let's see here. Okay. There. There's its lovely wings. Okay, and then we've got a smaller plane. Let's see here. I told you I wasn't an artist. And then down below, we have this information. And it says 9x minus 15 feet and 2x plus 3 feet. So uh, between the two, first two bars, between here and here, represents what? The length of the smaller plane. And then this bar here, so the first bar plus the second bar represents the length of the larger plane. And the question it says, find a polynomial that represents the length of the larger jet. So basically, what are we gonna do? What operation? We've got 
this is the length of the smaller jet. This whole thing is the length of the larger jet. How are we going to get the length of the larger jet represented by a polynomial? Hmm. Are we just adding? Yeah, addition. We're just adding. OK? So 9x minus 15 plus 2x plus 3. 11x minus 12, so 11x minus 12 feet. Now, why did I put everything in parentheses? Because if I write 11x minus 12 feet, that means the feet only goes on the 12. So I need to group the actual distance so that all of that is feet, okay? So be careful with that. We all right with that? Okay. Let's look at one more example here. And let's see, we've got this pedestal. And this whole thing. is x squared minus 3x plus 2 feet, OK? Uh -huh. yeah. All right, then we've got a second pedestal, a smaller one. And it is 5x minus 10 feet, OK? Find a polynomial that represents the difference in the heights of the two columns. So what would you do to find the difference in the heights of the two columns? Subtract. Right. You'd take x squared minus 3x plus 2 feet minus the quantity 5x minus 10 feet. All right. I'm going to drop the units until I combine the, the two polynomials, and then I'll bring them back in. OK? So this would be x squared minus 3x plus 2 minus 5x plus 10, which is x squared minus 8x plus 12 feet. You OK with that? So that's the difference of the height of the two columns. That's part A. Part B says, if the columns were stacked one atop the other, to what height would they reach? So now what are you going to do? Add. Add them. x squared minus 3x plus 2 feet plus 5x minus 10 feet, excuse me, plus. So you're going to get what? x squared minus 3x plus 2 plus 5x minus 10, which is x squared plus 2x minus 8 feet. OK with that? All righty, so tonight's homework, you've got section 5.4 and section 5.5. I will be back tomorrow morning at 10.05 with my office hour, if any of you want to come to that. Otherwise, I'll see you in class tomorrow. Before you go, can you do one more? Sorry about that. Can you do one that, that says find the degree of a polynomial? Sure. Did you have a specific? Sorry. A specific one in mind? No, no. So, but back to the whole idea of finding. Just any. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so I can kind of see it because it says one another. Okay. This actually goes back to five point four. Find the degree of a polynomial. Okay. How about let's see. How about this one? Negative five x to the fourth plus three x squared minus three x. So. 
what's the degree of the first term? What's the degree of that term? Four. What's the degree of that term? Two. What's the degree of that term? One. But the degree of the, of the entire polynomial is equal to the highest degree of any given term. So this is a fourth degree polynomial, okay? Now, let's take a look at another example. What about this one? 4r squared s cubed minus 5r squared s to the eighth. What's the degree of the first term? Five. What's the degree of the second term? 10. What's the degree of this binomial? 10th, that's a 10, 10th degree, okay? So when you're talking about the degree of a single term, you add the exponents on all the variables. When you're talking about the degree of an entire polynomial, it's equal to the same as the degree of the highest powered term. So you don't add those together. Okay, that's a common mistake people make. You okay with this, Sia? Or you want some more? No, I think I think I got it. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Alrighty, then I'm gonna shut down the recording and we will see.